Hyundai has hedged its bets with the new Kona. There's a petrol model and also an all-electric version. In between sits this car, the Kona Hybrid. It's a full hybrid, so it will travel short distances on electricity alone. But you don't need to plug it in. It recharges using energy that would otherwise be lost while slowing down. Now, during the course of this review, we're going to concentrate first and foremost on what the car is like to tow it, but we'll also consider how it stacks up as an everyday drive. We'll also think about space and practicality, running costs and value for money before we deliver our verdict. When you've watched the video, please do remember to click like and to subscribe to the Camping and Caravanning Club's YouTube channel. Click on the notification button to make sure you never miss a video again. For our towing test, we're using a Swift Fairway 470 weighing 1,154 kilograms, borrowed from Spinney, Warwickshire. Hyundai quotes a range of curb weights for the Kona Hybrid, varying from uh, 1,410 kilograms to 1,525 kilos, depending on the exact spec. The maximum towing figure is 1,300 kilograms, which is respectable for a hybrid uh, of this size and weight. However, it is worth noting that some purely petrol-powered rivals uh, do have higher maximum towing figures. Now, it's been pretty breezy during the course of our towing test, and we have felt some nudging, a little bit of pushing and shoving at the back of the car from the caravan. Now, to some extent, that is to be expected when the wind picks up, but I would say the likes of the Seata Tekka would take that sort of wind uh, more in its stride than the, the Hyundai has. Uh, it's certainly not a nervous tow car, but it's not absolutely out of the top drawer either. Hill starts in the wet are a bit of a struggle. The car tries to pull away using electric power alone initially, but then when the petrol engine kicks in, it's very easy to spin the wheels briefly. And it's a similar story pulling away from junctions when the road is slippery. But if the car does find grip, there's decent performance. It will comfortably tow a caravan the size of the Swift Fairway up to 60 miles per hour. However, when you do reach 60, there sometimes is a tendency for the engine to really hold on to quite high revs, uh, which does make engine noise a bit intrusive. In everyday driving, the Kona Hybrid is easy to live with. Without the weight of a caravan to pull, the engine doesn't have to work so hard so often, which helps keep noise levels down. Traction isn't such an issue either. But if you're driving on a twisty country road, the Kona is nothing like as much fun as a Ford Puma. This car is more at home around town than on a twisty B road. It can run on electricity alone for short periods and just creep along quietly in stop-start traffic. Let's take a look inside the cabin. You sit up nice and high in the Kona. After all, that's what many buyers are looking for from an SUV when choosing one over a regular hatchback. And for the most part, I found the driving position to be comfortable. There's plenty of adjustment to the seat. It's electric adjustment as well on this model, the N-Line S. Uh, and the lumbar support is adjustable too, which is a big plus if you suffer from a bad back. The pedals are nicely in line, so the driving position is fundamentally quite sound. The only niggle that I have is that the steering wheel could really do with adjusting outwards just a little bit more. I feel that when I've got the seat where I want it, I'm quite straight armed when I'm uh, holding the wheel. You get a twin screen display, as you probably expect in a modern car. The infotainment screen is compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if you prefer, you can mirror your smartphone rather than using Hyundai's system. One thing that you don't get on many modern cars increasingly is all these separate buttons. So you've got shortcut buttons running along the bottom of the screens to get you around your menus nice and quickly and completely separate controls for the air conditioning. So it's quite straightforward to make quick temperature adjustments without having to use an on-screen menu. Perhaps I'm a bit old fashioned, but I prefer it that way. Otherwise, there's good and bad inside this car. I'm not so keen on the plastics, they feel well screwed together, but rather hard and scratchy and a little bit cheap looking. And on the N-Line S, you get this 
red stripe running along the dashboard, which to me, it looks like it belongs in an 80s hot hatch, really. I'm not too sure about it at all. But it's certainly a comfortable place to sit and uh, very well equipped. Let's go and take a look in the back of the car. For a relatively small SUV, you get a decent amount of space in the back. The Kona is pretty good on legroom and headroom, and there are some nice practical touches. There are twin USB ports here, so there's no arguing about which of the kids gets to keep their phone on charge, and uh, air vents between the two front seats here keep everyone at a comfortable temperature. Another nice touch, and something that's quite unusual on a car at this price point, is you get heated rear seats as well as heated seats in the front. Most rear seats in most cars will split 60-40, that's the kind of standard arrangement isn't it, but in this car you get a three-part split which is really handy if you've got a couple of passengers in the back who want to stay nice and comfortable but you want to load long items. Really useful feature I think. You also get Isofix mounting points on either side if you're traveling with young children, very handy for fitting a child seat securely. So that's the back of the car, let's have a look in the boot. So the new Kona has a decent sized boot, there's 466 litres of space for your bags. What's pleasing is that that space is the same whether you go for the hybrid or the regular petrol model, you don't lose any space with the hybrid which you can do with some cars as there needs to be somewhere to store the batteries. Now you get a false floor which you can either have on this higher setting which gives you a nice flat uh, entrance, no load lip to lift items over or you can lower it down to get one large space. On this high spec N-Line S model you get a powered tailgate so it opens and closes at the push of a button. Now, here's something you don't see every day. The tow bar actually emerges from the back of the car at an angle. Now, it doesn't make any difference to the way the car tows because the actual tow ball is nicely lined up with the middle of the car. So it's not a problem. It doesn't affect anything adversely at all. Um, but it is rather unusual. The maximum download on the tow ball is 80 kilograms, which is a good, sensible figure for a tow car of this size. At the time of our test, the Kona Hybrid N-Line S costs £34,585. That compares well with the Kona's rivals, especially when you consider how well equipped it is. Fuel consumption is excellent according to the official tests, returning 60.1 mpg. We saw 27.4 mpg while towing. The Kona is a practical family SUV. But as a tow car, it's quite noisy and stability is good rather than great. Nonetheless, it does enough to deserve a place on your shortlist if you're looking for a tow car of this size. When you've watched the video, please do subscribe to the Camping and Caravanning Club's channel if you haven't already. Click on the notification button and you'll never miss any of the club's tow car, caravan, camping and motorhome content. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to click on the thumbs up button to like it and let us know what you think in the comments.